This is my oboe that I use to play a Baroque repertoire. Um, the pitch is 415, which is generally the agreed pitch to play Baroque repertoire these days. As one can see, it looks very different from the modern oboe. Probably the biggest difference is its colour. The modern oboe is made out of uh, black wood, um, which is a hard wood. This oboe, like many of that time, were made in boxwood, which is much, much softer which one can hear in the sound as well. The sound is softer, less penetrating, more mellow. Um, the second difference, I think, is probably the lack of keys. I, I only use two keys. One is to play an E flat or a D sharp. And the other one is actually only there because I physically can't actually stretch my little finger in order to cover this hole at the bottom. Everything else is being, like on a recorder, covered directly by my fingers. Um, for certain um, semitones, I've got to use half holing or cross fingering, which opens a whole new variety of sound colors. Um, playing cross finger with cross fingerings or half holes allows me to have much, much more covered sound for certain notes. And other notes are very, very strong. And Bach in particular was amazing at using the oboe in certain keys in order to express certain moods. So he would set something in C minor, which uses A flats, which is a half hole, B flats, which is a cross fingering. So the whole scale will be much more mellow than something like, for instance, C major or D major, which uses a lot of straight fingering and the sound is much, much more direct. Um, that is something that got lost in the, with the addition of keys. In his Brandenburg concertos, Bach uses the oboe in concerto number one and two. Um, the role of the oboe in these two concertos is varied. Um, we firstly play with brass instruments, we play fanfare-like themes um, or hunting, hunting motifs. Um, on the other side, we have to be chamber musicians playing just with a recorder, just blending with a recorder and a violin, just as if it was in a, in a trio sonata or in a quartet. And um, lastly, we have to be very, very lyrical as well, like the second movement of Brandenburg I shows, where the oboe just plays over this wonderful sound world carpet of the other oboes and the strings and is in a dialogue log with the um, piccolo violin. So here we have the more lyrical um, way of playing the oboe, but in the following movement, we are back to the hunting scene with the horns. The lack of keys on this instrument should never be seen as a disadvantage. Um, in fact, if we look back at the 18th century, when bassoons, flutes, uh, baroque clarinets and oboes, when there was the movement of having keys added to the instrument, the oboe was actually the instrument that developed the latest. Um, players stuck to their guns and wanted to keep this wonderful inequality within the scale, which um, happens through half holes, cross fingerings, all this. They wanted to hang on to this because the char characteristic of the sound was just so, so wonderful. And that is exactly what we're trying to do in the OAE, is bring to our audiences different repertoire of different centuries on different instruments so that you can listen and experience the different sound worlds that these different instruments create.